tackling rising hypertension and high blood cholesterol. Authorities to take a leave from the nutrition playbook and extend Nutri-Grade labels to salt, sauces and instant noodles. Uh, to give us an in-depth analysis of the Nutri-Grade measure, I'm now joined by Dr. Kalpana Baskaran. She is president of the Singapore Nutrition and Dietetics Association and head of the Glycemic Index Research at Temasek Polytechnic. Dr. Kalpana, thanks for joining us. Now, for a start, what exactly is the link of Nutri-Grading uh, to the Healthier SG program? Uh SG is a part of Singapore's broader multi-year population health strategy to shift our healthcare system towards preventive care and also to reduce the prevalence of chronic diseases by promoting healthier lifestyle. So when you look at this, the nutrient system actually plays a significant role in this effort by Purdue providing clear front of fat labels that inform consumers about the sugar and fat content of beverages. So this Nutri-Grade labeling scheme, it was first implemented in December 2022, Dr. Kapana. Uh, what's been the impact yes. like since its rollout? Has it been effective? Yeah, it has been uh, very effective. I'll, I'll give you some numbers. In fact, as soon as it was launched, you can see uh, it has been very effective in spurring reformulation uh, strategies among the industry, as well as shifting consumer preferences. Consumers are now switching to healthier options. Uh, in fact, seven in 10 pre-packed beverages purchased are A or B grade, compared to less than four in 10 in 2017, as well as the medium sugar levels of pre-packaged beverages has also decreased um, from around 7.1% in 2017 to 4.6% as of uh, uh, September, 2023. And one more uh, very important fact is around 60% of F&B outlets serve less sweet drinks by default. This is, in fact, a very incredible to see this uh, impact among uh, F&B uh, uh, be like, uh, beverage uh, dispensing as well. And also the decrease in diabetes prevalence was mm -hmm. observed across all age groups and genders in 2021-2020 indirectly. It has also uh, uh, given us uh, this boost, yeah. So we are seeing very positive results there, but uh, sodium, I suppose, is very different in the sense that it is an intermediate ingredient that's been added to food, right? So how realistic is it for salts, sauces, and instant noodles uh, to carry a nutrition label that's similar to nutrient-grade measures for sweetened beverages? Yeah, like uh, if you want to implement uh, a nutri grade like labeling system for salts, uh, noodles, and, and sauces, um, I, I feel it could be realistic, but only one thing we should bear in mind is it, it would be considered based on uh, the nutrient of concern as well as the product category. For example, let's say uh, for salt, just taking salt alone, the amount of sodium will be considered when we want to do the nutri grade A, B, C, and D. But there is when for when you look at sources, um, we need to consider the subcategories as well. I think we will be take uh, that will be taken into account because there are different types of sauces. For example, some of the sauces like sweet chili sauce, uh, the grading will take into account salt as well as sugar. And but when you take sauces like curry sauce, it might take into account salt as sat fat, etc. As for instant noodles. It contains sodium as well as saturated fat. So you, you, the, all these nutrient concerns will be taken into account based on the product categories. And so what sort of information would need to be included in these labels, Dr. Kapana? Okay, so uh, in fact, for, for uh, when, we, when you look at nutrient label, uh, in the case of salt, I think those who would like to have a nutrient grade label A, B, or C, and D, they need to provide information on the sodium content of the salt. And as for oils, you need to provide maybe information uh, regarding the saturated fat content of the oils. And when it comes to noodles, you need to provide information on uh, sodium as well as saturated fat content. So these are the information which is required. Mm. And based on the cutoff values, which will be decided soon, and mm. then 
uh, we will try to decide whether it falls within the category A, B, C, or D. Uh, Dr. Kapana, very quickly before we let you go, what could be some potential next steps for the Nutrigrade system looking ahead? Do you see it being further expanded outside of sodium, sugar, and fats? Yeah, I uh, okay, that's a wish. Okay, it, I hope it could be expanded into other categories of products in due course. And also, if we could integrate with digital tools, it will then provide a significant opportunity to further influence public health positively. For example, maybe I'm hoping it might be extended to different categories of snacks, different categories of spreads. So there is limitless possibilities. And this will definitely nudge consumers to go for healthier choice products and they will choose wisely. All right, Dr. Kapana, thank you very much for speaking with us. That was Dr. Kalpana Baskaran, President of the Singapore Nutrition and Dietetics Association and Head of the Glycemic Index Research at Tomasic Polytechnic. Thank you.